Good morning. Here I am standing in front of the gallery, someplace I haven't been in quite some time. I think the last time I communicated with you, I was at my dining room table. But now we are back in the gallery, although it's just us at this point. And I thought it would be kind of interesting, fun to give you a little tour. Many of you have been at in the gallery previously through the years, but some of you never have, so I thought it'd be nice to virtually bring you in and take a look at what we have and what we do every day. So come on, let's go inside and take a look. Well, here we are, finally able to be in the gallery. Through the years, many of you have been here with me had a glass of wine, but there are many of you who have only had opportunity to know us online. So we're still online because of the situation we all find ourselves, but um, I thought it would be kind of fun to let you see what the gallery looks like, maybe talk about three or four of the works that are in our current spring group exhibition. All of us are just trying to figure out what to do right now. And I think a moment or two with some works of art is probably refreshing. I'm standing in front of a grouping of screen prints by the great African-American artist, Romare Bearden. Bearden was born here where we live in Charlotte and much of his work our remembrances of his childhood spent here in Mecklenburg County. This particular grouping is called The Prevalence of Ritual, five large screen prints. Ritual is something that seems to be a choreography of all of our lives. And for one example, this particular piece called In the Garden is about the ritual of gardening and being into our own sense of space and place that we come back to. Here and also in the front room is a beautiful, bright painting by Lee Hall. Lee's paintings, she always thought of as being somewhat abstracted landscapes, as is this one, which is really about a uh, bright, sunny day and the sun shining reflecting off of a wall. Many times they would be called sun facades as she was dealing with the color and the texture of what she was finding in front of her. Lee was one of the members of the second generation of the Abstract Expressionists, and she exhibited in the 70s at Betty Parsons Gallery. Lee was also a, a writer and an educator, among other things. She was president of the Rhode Island School of Design. Lee was born in North Carolina, near Charlotte, and later in her life, she became reconnected with her roots and um, we were able to meet her and represent her and loved her dearly. We lost her a couple years ago. Raul Diaz, one of the great Argentine painters, lives in Cordoba near a large lake where his father would take him fishing when he was a child. The image of the boats dotting the water or stacked up on the shore, left an indelible impression on Diaz. He sees the boats, this image that is repeated all the time, he sees it as a metaphor for life's journey. Let's move into the next room. What do you say? All of us know Brian Rutenberg. Brian was born in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, 
grew up along the coast, and he likes to talk about his childhood tromping around in the brackish water and seeing all the reeds and the sun shining through and the shadows. And that has left him with these, this continuing series of abstracted landscapes. Um, for me, though, I still feel like I can walk into this particular picture. I feel like I can feel the wetness, of the water up to my knees, and um, the trees and the branches scratching against me as I'm pushing through them. I can't leave out these two beautiful small paintings by our Chris Clamp. Chris had a grandfather that he loved very dearly, and he would uh, go out into the old shed his grandfather had, find all sorts of old objects that were precious and important to Chris. So he would take them home and incorporate them into his paintings. These paintings are really sort of, in a sense, uh, object portraits. Again, you will see that many artists' work comes from their own history, their own life, their own rituals. We also have a magnificent sculpture by the great American abstract expressionist sculptor James Rosati. Rosati stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with the abstract expressionist painters and was side-by-side -side with people like David Smith. Um, Rosati's largest, most well-known work stood in the plaza between the World Trade Towers and was destroyed. This particular piece is a scale maquette for a much, much larger version that is in the permanent collection of the Albright Knox Gallery in Buffalo. It's very large and sits in their sculpture garden. We're thrilled to have the maquette. Here we have Charles Basham. These particular somewhat fantasized, somewhat heightened color pastels are very beautiful. Chuck grew up on a farm in Ohio. And again, with so many artists, that farm still stays in his mind and is still very important to him. He still lives on a portion of the farm. And all of these images come from the acreage that's around him. Here we stand before two quintessential Robert Motherwell gestural images. Although there's something a little unique, unusual about these, they are monotypes. Motherwell made very few monotypes. What that means is that he directly painted onto a copper plate, laid a piece of paper on it, and ran it through an etching press. So you get a direct mirror image transfer to the paper. Um, he did this because he was able to achieve different effects that he could not get in another manner. All of us have to deal with life on our own individual terms. And at the moment, there are many things that take precedent over others. But I wanted to end with this wonderful quote by Robert Motherwell, who once said, art is much less important than life. But what a poor life it would be without it. Thanks for joining me. Hope we'll see you again soon.